Welcome to Inside the Studio with Greg Wirth. And in this episode, I want to demonstrate an example of using FabFilter Pro Q2 to clean up a track with notch filtering techniques, um, otherwise known as sub subtractive EQ and whatnot. Um, I've mentioned it before in a couple videos in the past, but people sent me some emails and they wanted to get a little more in depth on that. So I figured I'd do a, a short video just to show you just that. So I really like using FabFilter because you can basically um, add as many bands as you need. So when I start, I like to just put this in 30 dB mode because um, when I do the, the notch filtering, I'll do high boosts and I want to be able to see everything uh, in the window here. And also I go ahead and I select this to auto makeup gain. So what that does is, um, it sort of compensates your output level. So when you're a being the signal, you're hearing the tonal changes rather than, um, drastic gain boosts or cuts. Another one is this has three modes, zero latency, natural phase, and linear phase. So, Depending on how drastic you you do your settings and just the, the track itself, how it how it's sounding with the song, um, you might be happy with either of these settings. I usually start in natural phase mode and um, take it from there. So what I've done is um, I was listening to this vocal here, and it it's you know it's purposely recorded with a little bit of grit distortion on it. But it's it's kind of muddy and, you know, it, it could stand to be cleaned up. And um, I suggest using notch filtering, you know, at the first stage when you mix. So insert that first before compression and whatever else. That way you're subtracting the the information that you don't like before you sweeten it and whatnot. And um, it, it yields a lot of great results. Um, so here's my preset I had here. So I'll just start by playing the track and then I'll show you what I got going on here. I'll engage these bands one by one. So here it is just, um, as it was recorded. So I make my move late at night. I look around and something ain't right. Yeah. So you know, very gritty. It's it's a vintage sounding um, recording. It was purposely done that way, but I think it could be cleaned up a little bit. So what I wanted to do was, um, it, as you can see on the graph here, it it already it was recorded with um, high a high pass filter on it already. I went ahead and did it further, and I cut at um, put a filter at 243 hertz. And right away, that sounded like that cleaned things up quite a bit. So I'll check this out. So I make my move late at night. I look around and something ain't right, yeah. What's this blood on my hands? So right away, that allows the track to cut a little bit more. So the next band here... I'm cutting a tight bandwidth at 287 hertz, a little less than 300. So I'll show you what that sounds like. So I make my move late at night. I look around and something ain't right, yeah. So that might be a little much listening back, but let, let me go ahead and show you the, the process, the decision making process of picking these bands and whatnot. So usually what I start with is I add a band and I boost all the way up and I make the, the band width as tight as possible. And then I'll sweep around and I'll find the offending frequencies. So take a listen. So I make my move late at night. I look around and something ain't right. So you can hear it's bringing up these resonances that are kind of honky and they just, um, they're annoying. So that's how I choose my bands. And, you know, somewhere between 300 to 87 ish in that realm, I usually do a cut. And, you know, depending on how, 
how bad it is that, you know, you, you cut only a little bit or sometimes you need a lot. So take a listen. So I make my move late at night. I look around and something. So yeah, that worked very nicely. So here's the next band is at 637. So I'll show you what that is fully boosted up. So I make my move late at night. I look around and something ain't right, yeah. What's this blood on my hands? So as you can hear, there's another you know, some annoying resonances. And um, if you listen very closely, you can kind of hear it go away. So let me play that again, and then I'll engage it and see if you can kind of hear that annoying part of the track go away. So I make my move late at night. I look around and something ain't right. You know, very subtle, but it cleans it up. So here we go again, around 1100 hertz. So I make my move late at night. So you hear how that screeches. That's those are the ones that are big, you know, especially doing like guitars or things like that. You can find those offending frequencies and just cut them out. So that that's a big um, clue as to what to look for to find things that are kind of just not pleasant in the track. So let's take a listen with that cut out. So I make my move late at night. I look around and something ain't right. Yeah. Okay. So now next up, 1.8 kilohertz. So I make my move late at night. I look around and something ain't right. So as you can hear, that that's pretty bad whistling. So. That sometimes you might want to cut a little more on that, but obviously listen to it in context to see how it sounds. So I make my move late at night. I look around. So I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, this is just a quick tutorial, obviously, but I just wanted to give you guys an example of what to look for. This works amazing for basically anything. Work bass drum, kick drum, snare toms, vocals, guitar, just anything that has a problem with it. Maybe you weren't able to record the tracks in the best scenario, best room, best equipment. Maybe somebody handed tracks over to you. So this is kind of a good technique to kind of start off a mix and clean things up. So that way, when you start compressing and EQing, you're not emphasizing those frequencies that are offending. So here, let's play this one more time. I'll bypass the whole EQ and then I'll engage it so you hear all these tweaks in context. So I make my move late at night. I look around and something ain't right. Yeah. So I make my move late at night. I look around and something ain't right, yeah. So that's much better, you know? So now it can move along and start compressing and adding some EQ to sort of brighten it up and make it exciting and fit in the track very well. Um, so I hope you learned something. And as always, feel free to shoot me emails because I'm happy to do little videos like this and get in more detail on something that I might have um, just glossed over quickly and you want a little more information about it. So thanks for watching and please subscribe to my YouTube channel and the newsletter on my website and I'll check you out next time.